Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anton and I will lead today's webinar about monitoring functionality of Smart PTT. In case if someone is unfamiliar with our software, I will tell you shortly about its general features. Smart PTT comes in two options. Smart PTT Basic is a solution for small local radio networks where control station is used to dispatch the system. Smart PTC Enterprise allows dispatch and control over complex Motorola or Mototurbo networks such as IP Site Connect, Capacity Plus, Link Capacity Plus and Connect Plus. Dispatcher software gives opportunity to control and log the flow of data and voice and radio network, request location of subscribers and monitor the state of repeaters. Smart PTC connects to Mototurbo networks directly via IP including Capacity Plus and Link Capacity Plus over a network application interface for both voice and data transmission. Capacity Plus networks can also be monitored and logged via IP connection without network application interface, but in this case to have ability to send data into network and make calls, control stations are needed. Also, Smart PTT gives a set of software tools such as web client and file transfer software which increase radio network usability and functionality. Smart PTT has functionality that allows it to connect to PBX and give subscribers the ability to use PBX interconnection from radio network as well. That's all general functionality. Well, let's proceed to monitoring functionality. Monitoring is an important feature of control. It provides an ability to diagnose problems in system and makes it easier to understand existing situation. Gathered data is recorded on database and is available for later use, building analytic reports or proving the system work state. No doubt, Monitoring is necessary and important in any system. That is why monitoring in Smart PTT gives a set of powerful and convenient features to control the workflow. Monitoring functionality consists of four tabs with full information on current system state, two types of reports based on monitoring functionality and coverage map drawing functionality. Also it includes system information window and uh, separate Smart PTT monitoring application. This is short overview. Now we will proceed with more details. Main monitoring view in Smart PTT Enterprise is organized in four tabs. First tab is called Monitoring and consists of list of available networks, events timeline and detailed log of monitoring events. When radio network is selected from the list, timeline will appear showing latest events in last 20 seconds. Bars will appear from the right side and will move to the left. The width of bar represents length of event, when height represents received signal strength during this event. Each event has a corresponding entry in the log right below timeline. Information about RSSI level, receiver, sender and repeater where this event was transmitted is listed here. Also. Each event is stamped with start time and length and differentiated by type. Events are differentiated by 11 different colors based on the type of event. This helps to figure out a lot on the network at first glance. When event starts, correspondingly sized and colored bars will start to appear from right side of the screen in the window that corresponds to slot where this event had happened. Simultaneously, an entry will be made in log at the bottom, listing type of event, date and time of start, recipient, originator and RSSI level. When event ends, bar will be over and total length of event in milliseconds will appear in the log. The second tab is called topology and represents structure of all connected networks. Also, it gives ability to get some extra information about repeaters in the network as well as option to control repeaters, switch channels and power level. It's also possible to configure radio server to add other devices to topology, Cisco routers and Eton UPS devices, as well as other unknown devices, as well as group them into special regions called sites. Device ID is shown under its picture. Also, left click in the device opens statistics and parameters window where load on the device and some hardware information are listed. 
Left click in radio server will open server statistics window, listing hardware information about radio server, including processor load, hard disk state, and sensor state. For example, temperature sensors or fan sensors. Percentage about repeaters show mean loading over last minute. Repeater marked with yellow star is master for this network. When channel is busy, yellow LED will appear on corresponding repeater's picture and percentage will begin to rise. Total load percentage is 50% per slot. So both slots busy for a whole minute is 100% loading. Topology is created on automated basis. If repeater goes offline, it will disappear from topology. This behavior can be modified by adding more devices in network configuration tab in radio server. Here you can add repeaters to be monitored, create special blocks called locations. Locations will be shown on topology highlighted by box around devices, included in location. Cisco and Eaton devices can also be added here. The process of adding a device is simple. Right-click the group to include device 2, select appropriate device and click it. Device will be added and can be configured. Common configuration includes IP address of device, SNMP version, emergency alarm notification addresses and phone numbers which will receive notification if this device fails. And short description of device to differentiate devices from each other. When device is added in radio server network configuration, it will not disappear from topology when disconnected. Instead, it will be highlighted with red outline. This allows the user to clearly see which devices have connection issues. It's also possible to set up alarm notifications for each device. Settings for device allows the user to include a series of phone numbers, SMS recipients, and a list of email addresses. Upon emergency alarm event, SMS and email messages will be sent out as notification about emergency within a monitored network. Also, when alarm happens, it will be recorded on event log, and dispatcher will get a notification mentioning alarm state. It is also possible for end user to retrieve state of devices via third party SNMP client. Third tab is called Diagnostic and represent functionality commonly available from RDAC application of Motorola. Some of listed information are IP network Im information, IP address and port, CPS technical data, code plug and firmware, ver firmware versions, serial number, model of repeater and so on. Current state of repeater, signal and mode, used frequencies, lock state, power level, channel name, and so on. And alarm states. All alarms available for repeater are monitored. The last tab is called lock. And keeps track of events happening with hardware. Disconnections and connections, alarms, etc. This lock is available to be requested from radio server for a set period of time or to be created in real time during dispatcher's work. On the log, the following events will be highlighted with different colors based on severity. Critical, red color. High alarm, pink color. Minor alarm, yellow color. This log makes it easier to keep track of hardware problems and to monitor the state of network on the run. Next feature is coverage map functionality. It allows dispatcher to draw a map that will represent the RSSI level of received GPS coordinates for selected subscribers. RSSI level is represented by color. Color is changing from green to yellow to red with decreasing RSSI level. Map can be drawn with different sizes of colored spots to represent coverage on different map zoom levels. It can be drawn over any supported map type. Coverage map can be shown for each subscriber individually, as well as for group of subscribers. It allows dispatcher to differentiate coverage maps for mobile subscribers from portable subscribers, and to differentiate VHF subscribers from UHF ones. 
Coverage map is based on location da data where subscribers have moved already. If some place was not visited by any subscriber, there will be no color. But it will not mean there is no coverage. It will mean that no one had tested this place. The next is report functionality. Dispatcher can request an analytics report. It will show activity on the radio network for last month distributed by slots of system. It is an analytic tool to estimate a level of load on the network, voice to data ratio and percentage of specific type of events. All event types are listed in quantity per day. Size of circle represents relative quantity of events happened at this day. Relative percentage between voice and data is also available for each day. It is also possible to generate monitoring report. Data about monitoring events will be listed here for a selected period of time. Report can be built in UTC time or local time of PC. Following data is included in every entry of report. Date and time of event. ID of network where event had happened. Repeater where event was transmitted. Slot of repeater where event originated, protocol, which in fact is a type of event, originator and recipient of event, duration of event, and RSSI level of event signal. Also, it's possible to request system information. It can be requested for dispatcher's PC and for any connected radio server. System information includes event statistics showing load on the system, Dispatcher can see how many events of listed types had happened for a time being. Database statistics showing database sizes and limits. It makes decisions on database backup easier. And audio storage folder size makes it easier to control hard disk space usage. Smart PTT monitoring uh, exists as a dedicated application and has all listed functionality except coverage map drawing. Smart PTT monitoring is installed as a separate application with its own radio server. Visually, it's Smart PTT application with only one view, monitoring. Reports are available from top menu. That is all about the general features of monitoring functionality of Smart PTT. Visit our website smartptt.com to find out more information about Smart PTT software. Check out our technical support portal on support.smartptt.com. You can submit your requests there and receive fast and professional help. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our, to our YouTube channel, user SmartPTT. If you have any questions, feel free to send email to us on info at smartptt.com or ask it on support portal. This webinar is recorded and will be uploaded on YouTube as well as available for download on our website or by request on aforementioned email.